My name is Jeremy Bradshaw. I'm originally from California. Um, so when my mother had found out that she was pregnant with me, um, she had told my dad, and they weren't together at the time. Um, was like, hey, you know, we need to raise this child together. And he was like, that's not my kid and stuff like that. And so it got to this point where, like, now his other girlfriend, and she basically told him, like, you can either have me in your life or you can have that kid in your life. And so he chose her. Um, so because of that, you know, I, he was never in my life. I was born without him. And uh, it really, like, damaged me. Like, I feel like from the moment that I was born, even in the womb, I was, like, born into rejection. And so I really grew up really kind of feeling alone. Even though I wasn't necessarily alone, I felt alone a lot of the time. And even as a child, you know, I'd... Uh, be laying in my bed and it was like I could hear voices downstairs talking, like almost like a crowd of people talking downstairs. And so like there was that that was going on too because um, it, it was just very like demonic. And I realized where it's from now. My grandma, she practiced a lot of uh, like um, tarot card, things like that. And so because of that, you know, that allowed a lot of that in there. And so we had like this line of psychics, I guess. So in that, you know, it just led to more darkness filling my heart. Um, eventually led me into doing heavy drugs like marijuana starting and then into shrooms after that and then eventually leading to meth and heroin. Um, and so they always say like, you know, oh, marijuana's not the gateway drug and stuff. And yeah, some people could smoke it and be fine and be done with it. But for me, it was like a thing where I was like, oh, this wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Well, this ain't bad. Maybe the shrooms won't be that bad. So then I did that and I was like, well, if the shrooms and the marijuana weren't that bad and, and then you could kind of see where I'm going from there it led into... Um, smoking meth and heroin and such. So in that, it just really kind of broke me and got me to this place of darkness that was so intense that like uh, I started allowing these, these things, what I didn't know at the time, but now I do. I was allowing these demons to come in and fill me. Um, and I remember being like on shrooms and like I would almost call upon these spirits to come fill me up in a way. I didn't know what I was doing at the time, but... And so... I'm in the year 2013, I'm drug ridden, I'm angry, I'm filled with all this darkness and this desire to hurt people and such. And uh, my mom had to actually take me to a hospital because I was just not myself. I was just freaking out and screaming and just like pretty much lost my mind. And uh, they brought me to the hospital and they had a psychiatrist come in and talk with me and she deemed me unsafe to be out. And so I got put on what is called a 5150 hold which is basically danger to self or danger to society. And they put me into a mental facility for, it was supposed to be three days, but it ended up being seven. And so I finally get let out of that. I end up doing heavy drugs one last time. And then I, for some reason, and I have no idea why, I just decided to stop. Like I, I was still smoking weed, but I, I was like, the meth, the heroin, the shrooms, all that, I need to be done with, you know? And I let that go and just continued living my life. And a couple months later, I was working at Chipotle actually. And uh, this girl got hired there. You know, she always spoke about Jesus. And so I was like, all right, this is, I mean, she's cool, but she's weird. And this whole Jesus thing, I'm not about it. Because at the time I was atheist, you know, I didn't believe in God. So I'm at Chipotle and Ashley is the girl that worked at Chipotle. She was like, hey, I need a ride home. You know, my car broke down. Um, can you give me a ride home? And I was like, sure. So I like drove her home and, and all of a sudden I just knew in my heart, I, I wanted to give my heart and my life over to the Lord. And so like, I told Ashley that, I was, I was like, hey, I think I'm ready to give my life over to the Lord. And she's like, what, really? That's amazing. You know, I was like, yeah. Literally, I, I went through the repentance prayer and the, the sinner's prayer and just like repented for my ways and, you know, asked the Lord to come and live in my heart. And it was in that moment I experienced him for the first time. You know, a lot of people, you know, have those moments where they're just like, oh, you know, I said it and I, I believe it and everything. But th this was like his presence came so heavily on me in that moment when I, uh, when I, uh, received him. Um, and I actually got baptized in the Holy Spirit in that moment as well. So I was able to get not only saved, but baptized in the Holy Spirit at the same time. And so I knew without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord was real. You know, I remember um, in 2019, I was sitting on my uh, my deck and uh, I was reading, <laughs> I was reading my Bible and I was smoking a joint at the same time. And uh, I remember the Lord's voice so clearly spoke out to me and he said, Jeremy, you will never be able to do what I've called you to do while smoking weed. And it was in that moment that I was like, yeah, I need to be done with this. I found a church home and it was amazing. But like I said, I was still struggling really bad with just 
depression and feeling lonely and just brokenness. Um, and so eventually I went to Raise to Deliver um, there in Seattle or it's Federal Way in April of 2021. And there I received some deliverance that was just amazing. And like, I was so changed. So I ended up leaving um, Arkansas and coming up to, dis uh, to the discipleship program here at Hungry Gen. And it changed my life. So I remember Deliverance Sunday and I get up there and I close my eyes and I'm just sitting there and all of a sudden I hear uh, Brittany's voice. I didn't know her at the time, but she's just like started praying for me. And then she said, I see you in there hiding and I can, you are no longer allowed to hide. And all of a sudden I just started manifesting. And I was like, oh, I knew there was something hiding in there. And so I go through this and she's like asking me like, where are you from? Telling me that it was a spirit of witchcraft that was in generations, um, that came from generations ago. And it was using my eyes to cause me to be impure and um, all these things and it had been torturing me. And so like finally that thing gets yanked out of me and I'm finally delivered and I remember sitting there and I was like crying so heavily because I was like, I'm finally free. This is the moment I've been waiting for and praying for my entire life and I'm finally free. And I just remember I couldn't stop crying and, and I was just so joyful because I was like, I can't, I, it was so surreal. And I finally got to that point. I'm like, I'm free. After getting set free, it was like the cage was open and I could walk out of it and just be free. And I have not been the same ever since. And because of that, man, the Lord has just been doing so much in my life and he's changed me completely. And I just am so grateful to him for everything he's done. And he continues to do even more so every single day. And so I just hope that this is an encouragement to somebody out there just saying like, no matter how, how much darkness you've walked in, you know, there's still hope for you. My name is Jeremy and this is my testimony.